Amen. The book of Luke chapter 15. Amen. Thank you again for being here this morning. Um, we are in some dark, dark, difficult times in our, in our history. We need to be praying, doing right, witnessing to everybody you run into. Let's go out with a blaze, brother. Amen. Go out in a blaze of glory. If the Lord's coming soon, let's go out in a blaze of glory. Doing right. Uh, get you a bumper sticker. Put you one of them scripture signs in your yard. Go give out tracts. Knock on somebody's door. Let's go out in a blaze. Amen. That's right. Now, here in Luke chapter 15, I'm going to hit this story from a different angle. This is the famous story of the prodigal son. This, uh, there's been no telling how many different messages with different angles about this story. This is called the Prince of Parables, actually. There's more. It's unbelievable the Lord could say all this in just these few short verses. I'm going to hit it a little bit different this morning, and I want you to please, please, just for a very short few minutes, give me your attention. Let's read it first. Verse 11, And he said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them. Now you might know it would have been the younger, right? People say, well, that first kid I had, that, but that younger one, I, they, I can't, they're completely different. Why ain't she like that? That's what it says. That's in the Bible for a reason. And the younger one. You'll find out you, you got, you're smarter between the ages of 14 and 20 than you'll ever be in the rest of your whole life. You're a genius. Nobody can tell you nothing, right? You know everything. And the younger of them, oh, they're, boy, we got some geniuses out here running around. And, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me. Is that human nature or what? Give me. Isn't that something? Y'all look at stuff like that when you read the Bible. You can stay all day on just that right there. Give me. You, you, know, how, you know how you know the Bible's true? Because it, it nails human nature. You know what a baby, the first thing a baby does when he gets hold of him, puts it in his mouth. You know what the first thing sin committed in this world was? Putting something in your mouth. You just put that down. Put that down. Don't put that in your mouth. Isn't that funny? Yeah, not day unto day utter speech. Night unto night other knowledge. Everything around you testifies the word of God's truth. The sun, the moon, the stars are given for signs. The way the planets and everything, all that wrote the orbit, all of that stuff is set like to a clock that a man can't make one that'll stay that right. I tell you something, that can't be an accident. You know what all this means, don't you? There is a God in heaven and he's looking at you right now. He, he knows what you're thinking about me too, so you better watch out. He takes up for me sometimes. Look at this. He said, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided the daddy unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, spent all that money, blew it, partying, there arose a mighty famine in that land and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him. Verse 17, and when he came to himself, yeah, I mean, you just over and over and over and over, when he came to himself, you know what that means? That means if you're saved, and you're out living crazy and doing wicked stuff now, you're not in your right mind. You need to, you need to snap back in reality. You, he, he come to himself out of, his, out of his right mind. And he said, how many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight 
and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe, put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. I got one little truth. I, I preached this same with several different titles, different angles of this story. I've never done it like this today. The title of this message is Get Back In There. Get Back In There. And the message is for all of you that are here this morning and those, those that are watching wherever you're out there in other countries, England, Africa, uh, Canada, uh, over in uh, all, all over the UK and everywhere, my message to you today, get back in there with God. You remember when you first got saved? You loved it. You absolutely loved going to church. You prayed. It was real. You read the Bible and everything you read in the Bible, you think, I don't understand this, but my goodness, this is God's Word. This is great. You sang hymns going down the road. I've had people come... Say, Brother Danny, can I borrow a song book? And I said, well, no, them things cost a lot of money. We need that back. I said, please, just let me take it home. I promise I'll bring it back Wednesday night. And go home and set it home and go through there singing them songs in the book. Remember them days? Remember them days when you could not wait to come back to church for the next service? But now you dread church. Don't read your Bible. And you don't even... You wouldn't even go if you didn't feel so guilty and get pressured from your, your wife or your kids or somebody. Now you never listen to preaching or him. What happened to you? I'm going to use this sto boy's story there this morning and try to draw, bring you a little picture of that. And, uh, and the first thing I want to say is this. This boy, they lived up there, and I, I always imagine this story. Probably might be wrong, but I imagine it like the old days in the Ponderosa. And there was Ben and his son's hoss, little Joe, this is the guy in this story, and um, the other one, Adam. And, and they lived way up yonder in a big old ranch-style house. They had cattle. They had everything. They had everything a person could want. They had, uh, but back then there was no, no TV, no no cell phones, no communication with the outside world. And all you ever knew about the outside world is somebody just happened to come through and, and tell you stuff. I mean, I mean that, was, that was really, uh, and there, there are a lot of ways in which people were better off then than they are now. Now you know every dirty, rotten, low-down thing in the world as it's happening. And uh, I'm not sure that's been good for us. And they, they, they lived up there on the hill, so... The first thing I want to say about this boy is he had it made and didn't know it. He had it made and didn't know it. You ever heard anybody say that? Say, Man, I had it made and didn't know it. That's exactly what this boy was. Now think about that. He slept every day, grew up in the father's house, who worked, who had savings. His dad must have been a fine man. He had, an, he had, a, he had some uh, retirement or he had some savings in a bank. He was going to give it to his boys when he died. He had made his living. His house was paid for. All his camels and sheep and chariots and everything was all paid for. He had, ever, had money in the bank, and he had a, so he must have been a good man. I mean, oh, this, this, this boy had his own room. He'd go right there in his own room. Somebody else had washed the sheets. Somebody else had washed the pillowcases. Somebody else had hop seen, cooked all the food. Hey, 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 come in there and they'd sit down uh, to a, a big old table about as long as from here to there and, 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 and Ben and Joe and Hoss and Adam. They were, well, none of them married, I don't think, back then. Uh, but uh, they, they might have been in this story, but don't mention it. 
and the servants and everything sit on this big long table about the color of that, that uh, uh, cherry wood on that pulpit right there. And they'd sit down and boy, they'd come out with a big old bowl of, of fried chicken and put it down. And then a big old bowl of green beans and set it down. And then a big old bowl of pintos and set it down. And then uh, yeast rolls and, and cornbread. And, and they had uh, rice and uh, you're dismissed. Let's go. Cut it short today. Well, I'm just kidding. Uh, but uh, uh, they, I mean, boy, they had, they had desserts of all kind. They had strawberry uh, cheesecake, and they had uh, everything there. And, buddy, that boy had it made. He lay down at night. He didn't have to worry about thieves breaking in his room. He didn't have to worry about snakes in his, in his bedroom. Everything was all sealed off. See, you don't think about stuff like that when you're young and you're growing up. I remember uh, when I was little growing up, I didn't even realize we had a house payment. I didn't know you had to pay for a house. You know, that's the way people are. That's the way kids are, right? Uh, they, don't, they don't know you have to pay a light bill every month. They just think you turn the light on, light comes on. Uh, it takes a shower and hot water comes on, you know. You just get in the car and go. Nobody really, you really have to pay for that? <laughs> and, and that's what they think. The boy had it made and didn't know it. Now, let me tell you something this morning. You know, I'm tell you, some of you people sitting right here this morning, your heart's away from God. You've got out and got yourself messed up. I ain't dumb, and this many people here this morning, there's probably 25 or 30 sitting here today. You've done God away from God. You're cold. You're the prodigal this morning. You're out there not doing right, and you, when you was in church, you had it made and didn't know it. You're, all your sins were forgiven. You'd drive down the road. You wasn't scared. Uh, when the phone rang, it didn't scare you. Uh, when, when something happened, it didn't bother you. When you felt a little pain in your side or something, you didn't think, oh, no, oh, no, this is the Lord. I'm, I'm being judged. I mean, you remember how good you had it made when you was right with God? You had it made and didn't realize it, people. You had it made and didn't know it. All his clothes, all of his shelter, all of his family, his tennis shoes, his blue jeans, I mean, his, his football, his base, baseball bat, his basketball, everything, it was all that, you know, it was all that. Your past was forgiven. Your, your present was blessed. Your future was glorious. You used to never miss church. I, I used to love the Lord. You'd come to church and you'd request prayer for so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. Yeah, listen, when you're, in, when you're really first saved and you're right with God and you're in church, those are some of the best days of your whole life. And but you know what? You get to where you take it for granted. You get to where you, you uh, take it for granted. He, 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 he had it made and didn't realize it. How many times I've talked to people and they'll say, Brother Danny, I had it made and didn't, I didn't even realize what I had and now I've lost it. So the second thing is he deliberately left it. Father didn't run him off. Nobody forced him. The army didn't call him to draft him. He deliberately left everything he had. I don't know where it come from. I'm going to imagine that he had a traveling salesman come through. And this traveling salesman come through, and he come through on this flashy-looking little horse, and he's all dressed up in shiny clothes like that little Joe had never seen before. And he come through there, and he said, Hey, duh, what's up, man? And he said, he said, I'm from the far big country. I'm from the big country, way up from here, the far country. And little Joe said, Really? What's it like there? Oh, we have a big city, and we have more oh, well, big, beautiful buildings, and we have people going everywhere, and there's fun, and there's excitement, and there's all kinds of parties. You ever been to a party, little Joe? He said, uh, no, no, I haven't. He said, it's where there's, there's thousands of young people just like you, and they all get together, and they play music. Not this old junk oh, y'all play around here. They play good music. Music. And oh my, he said, like what? He said, uh, he said it sounds a lot different. Eh? And uh, uh, he he had a little old transistor radio, and he turned that little thing on him. And uh, the far country, long way from here. That's why I call it far. And it's way out there. And 
for her. And he said, WWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWWW
I want tacos. They eat pizza down there. And they say, well, I don't see how you could trade fried chicken and biscuits and gravy and country-style steak for tacos. He said, because it's cool. Ding. And the bell ring when they have their commercial. And, and, the, and the pizza hut's open all night. You know, drive through, ride my camel right through there and order it and go. And I lay down the money and I go in the bars and, and I sell my friends and they just love me down there. Don't you know when little Joe come in, he's a pretty good looking fellow feller, Michael Landon was. You know, when he come in there, uh, when he come into town, don't you know, all the girls said, wow, who's that? Nice camel. Cool. Good night. He had the, he had the eyelids tinted on that thing. <laughs> blacked out <laughs> I, I never thought of that before uh, but he, he, he had he had uh, he had that thing all 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 decked out brother and you could you could hear him before you saw him boom 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 they said who's that I don't know he's, I think he's kind of cute don't you that's you have a Oh, you rent an apartment? Where'd you get all this money? Ah, I've always had it. Worked hard for this. He didn't say who worked hard for it. They had parties. They went to the clubs. They th he said, everybody drinks on me. They loved him. They loved him. $25 an hour. Lived on a vacation spot. Wasn't long he got him one of them pretty little girls. And every night he'd text her and say, you still love me? And she'd say, yes. And then he'd get a weird text. And the weird text would say, are we still going tomorrow at 6? He'd say, Going where? And she's actually texting two different boys and sent him the wrong one. <laughs> Ring a bell, anybody? You ever sent the wrong text to the wrong person? You ever received the wrong text from the right person or the wrong person? And he said, uh, what does that mean? Oh, 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 oh I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, my sister's supposed to take me to get my hair fixed. Uh, let alone that he began to be in want. He went to the bank one day and said, I'd like to make a withdrawal. And they said, I'm sorry, Mr. Cartwright, uh, your account's empty. He said, well, that's impossible. I just put $20,000 in here uh, a few weeks ago. And she said, the lady said, well, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, we, don't, we don't have any. And, and it, the coronavirus is hit and you know, people can't get their money. No way. You can't. You can't. You can't have none. We don't, we don't have to give it to you. You don't have any anyway. And he said, well, that can't be true. She said, I'll show you your receipts. Longhorn Saloon, $850. On Friday, oh, Lord, did I spend that much? Good night. I don't remember that. Well, perhaps, sir, you should start paying attention and quit spending money when you're drinking. He said, I, I can't be broke. They said, well, long story short, he had to sell that camel. He had to move out of his apartment. He, the Bible said he lost everything, he spent all. And listen, people, the world's full of people out there that got money and they're out there today that's broke, they spent it all. Sin is expensive. Every once in a while, I, I see something on my phone, it'll say some NBA player, some famous guy that made made. Eight, ten million dollars a year, some more, some, and now they're broke on Skid Row somewhere on drugs. Sin, listen to me, sin will cost you more than you want to pay, buddy. Sin is very expensive. And I'm going to talk about that, the third thing, and I'm through. He's sitting in there one day and he said, Good night. My daddy's got people that work for him that's better off than I am. And then it light came on and he said I'm, 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 my daddy good night I'm going home 
I don't know if my daddy will have me or not, but I'm going home. Listen to me, y'all. Listen to me. Here's what you need to do. Here's what I'd like to encourage you to do. Get back in there. Get your life right with God this morning. Now, let's talk about him going back. And that's I want to get to it. I'm through. His daddy did not come and get him. He had to get up and go back to his daddy. Daddy did not run him off. Daddy ain't going to come get him. Now, listen. God didn't run you off. God didn't make you go out and get backslid. God didn't make you go out and do stupid stuff. And the Lord ain't going to just pick you up and say, and dust you off and say everything's fine. You're going to have to get up and get out of that hog pen and come back to where God is. Now, I ain't, I ain't preaching salvation by works. You know how I believe. Uh, salvation is a free gift of God plus nothing, minus nothing. God's salvation's free. Uh, forgiveness is free. But when you get away from God, you got to come back. I ain't talking about being saved. I'm talking about getting your life back right with God. He was still his son down there in the hog pen. But he had to get up and get out of that mess and come back to the Father. And that's the hard part. That's the hard part. He had to dig. Now listen, this is the most important thing I'm going to say this morning. He had to dig and scratch and walk. And it is, I don't know how far it was. It's far country. And he didn't have no camel to ride back neither. He walked. And here it is in a nutshell. It's what the Lord gave me the other day. And he gave me this for somebody sitting here today. My front yard's just like that right there. And, and when it snows, we, we have a... Because you can go in the front living room door right here. And we put sleds and tubes and everything out there. And, the kids, and they just hit them things and slide down the front yard. And you go all the way down the front yard and cross uh, Corey's driveway and you have to dig your feet in like that right there or you'll go in the pond. And it sto- I've, st- I've stopped right at the edge of that water before. And everybody loves to do that. And man, you get up there on that thing, sometimes you'll get a run, take your tube like that and just unfall on your belly and fly down that hill. And you go, here's about how long it takes to get down the hill. And then you got to pick that thing up and walk. The snow's that deep, and it's straight, and it feels like ten miles back up that hill. Yeah. Now it don't take long. It don't take long for them to realize that walk back ain't worth that th- little short thrill you get for sliding down there. Because I'm tired of this. It'd be fun if you didn't have to walk back, wouldn't it? Now, see, that's the way it is in sin. Did you know you can get out and sin, get real in overnight? But man, it's a long way back. It's a long, hard road back. It's a long, hard road back. Days of walking. He rode out, but he had to walk back. He slid down, but he had to climb back up. He listened to California girls on the way down there. But he's humming just as I am on the way back. He walked down there with his head high and his chest stuck out. He come back with his head bowed, with his eyes humble before God. He walked down there feeling good and happy. He walked back with a knot in his stomach. Wondering if his father was going to even receive him. He walked down there with a bunch of friends. He come back all by himself. Now listen. I'm going to tell you how, what you need to do. I see so many people, they stay out of church for six months or so. They get backslid and they come back and say, Well, Brother Danny, I need to get back in there. I need to get back in there. I said, That's exactly what you ought to do. And, and they'll just come to the altar and say, Lord, forgive me. And think, think that's all there is to it. That ain't all there is to it. It's a lot harder than that it's a lot more difficult than that I didn't say it took that for God to forgive you God forgive you on the spot but I tell you what you're going to do you have to make up your mind you're going to dig your way out of the mess you've got yourself into that's what you got to do I, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying God won't, God will forgive you for anything right now on the spot but you get yourself out there and get a mess you're going to have to dig yourself out I know a boy good man love the Lord and he little by little let himself get away from God. 
He let himself get away from God. Y'all can come on, girls. Come on. Let me play soft with you. And he let himself get away from God. And you know what he told me? He said, Brother Danny, he said, I went to the altar and I asked the Lord to forgive me. But he said, that was just the start. He said, I literally, listen to this. He said, I literally had to make myself read the Bible and pray. And I made myself. I didn't even want to. I didn't even want to read the Bible. And I made myself. I had to throw away some movies. I had to throw away some, some stuff. I had to get rid of some stuff. Uh, yeah, I, had, I had beer in the refrigerator. I had this. And I, he said, I had to get rid of it. I had, I had to get rid of some friends. He said, it was a, it was a climb getting my life straightened out. Don't misunderstand me. God, listen, that boy, God, that father didn't come down there and get him. He walked back to the father. Now, when the father saw him, he come and met him and forgive him and all of that. But he had to make that long journey by himself. And that's what some of you need to do tonight this morning. You need to make up your mind, I'm going to get back right with God if it's the last thing I ever do. Because this thing, look, Look at the world, y'all. Look at the world. The stuff that's going on out there. Do you honestly think we've got a lot of time left? Do you honestly not see how, 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 how quick the Lord could come and how everything just going to pieces? We're seeing things happen today. We, this, this peace treaty they made with Israel and all that, that's unbelievable. That ain't happened in our lifetime. Stuff like that. It's every day you turn on the news, it's something else, something else, something else. God trying to tell us something. You're trying to tell us, you ain't got much time. You better quit playing around. Get out of the hog pen. Leave it. Leave that junk. It ain't worth living for no way. It ain't worth it. Get your life back. Get back in there. I want you to stand. They're going to sing this morning. I've not always been faithful. Thank God he has. Let's get in this altar this morning. Let's get our life right with God. Let God speak to your heart this morning. Come on, join me in this altar this morning. Say, you know what? I'm not, I'm not I'm been not faithful. Amen. 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 That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've not always been faithful, but my father's been always been there. Woo! Yes, hallelujah. Come on, friend. Come on, friend. Come on, get out of your seat and come right now. Come on, mama. Come on, daddy. Get back in there. Get back in there for God. Get back in there for God. Yeah, man. Oh, he has. Yes, amen. Yes, I've not been faithful, but thank God he has. Amen. I tell him I'm not amen. strong in yes. his I tell him, Lord, I can't do it, but the Lord said I can. I, I can't do it, Lord, but you'll help me. By the grace of God, I'll be there. Amen. Amen. Will you come this morning? And I'm not Woo, Lord of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Not always overcome. Amen. Come on, Daddy. Come on, Daddy. Come on, Mama. Oh, and he he has. has. He's been the best friend been I've ever had. Friend Woo. This world yeah, man. Known. Come on, this one. Come on, ma'am. Come on, sir. Come he on. Get back in there. Get back in there. Get back in there for God. On Calvary all yeah, man. Oh, man. That's right. Sing now. He has. To the Father. He went back to the Father. Listen. Listen now. Go ahead, ladies. I can't see what's ahead, but he, he has. Yeah, man. I can't conquer death, but he, he has. has. I can't, but he has, and thank God. Woo, that's good sin, news. Hey, man. But I failed the test you again. can't do it by yourself, but he can. He has. He can. He'll help you this morning. Yes, Get back in there. Get back has. in there right now, today. Get back oh, in there now. He has yeah, man. Yeah, man. been the greatest friend Hallelujah. this world has ever known. Amen. Amen. He has Amen. Amen. 
Glory to God. Listen, I can't do it. I can't do it. Thank God he can. Yeah. He has. Lord will help you today if you'll let him. World's ever known. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He has paid the debt on Calvary alone. Amen. for you today if you'll let him. He has. Yes, he has. God's speaking to your heart today. Yes, he has. Amen. 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 That door come back to that daddy. He said, Daddy, I can't do it, but you can. And his daddy went to him and hugged him and fixed him back up and put him where he ought to be. I've, I've never thought of this until I was studying this, and I thought in those next few days and weeks, he probably felt sort of weird. He probably felt like it ain't like it once was. It ain't like it once was. And that's the way it goes. That's the price you pay for getting out and, out and seeing out of God's will. It may never be like it once was. But you take what God gives you and be happy with it. Amen? He, he, it got nothing to do with God. It got nothing to do with the Father. He just, he had a hard time forgiving himself there for a while. Sometimes it's harder for you to forgive yourself than it is for God to forgive you. He probably felt weird there for a good while, wouldn't you say? Every time he saw his older brother, oh boy, uh, went and wasted all my, and his older brother got full of the devil too. And, but he got it fixed. And that's the main thing. If I was you here this morning and I've been backslid, I'd make up my mind no matter who, no matter what. I wasn't going to let a paycheck, I wouldn't let a boyfriend, a girlfriend stop me from getting back in there. Because the time's coming real soon when you're going to need help from the Lord bad. All right? Amen. Thank you for being here this morning. Don't miss tonight, 6 o'clock this evening. We're going to study.